What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Today on the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage, AMT's 1964 Oldsmobile F85 Convertible Plastic Model Kit. To get in the spirit of this video, I've put on my old BC Oldsmobile Club jacket from the 1990s, and now it's time to go down to the bench and see what's in the box. Oldsmobile, where the action is. This AMT 1964 Oldsmobile F85 Convertible Customizing Kit can be built in one of three ways, stock, custom, and racing. This 125th scale model kit is all new by AMT and was released in 2023. You can build this mod customizing version as shown on the box. Add this hot racing version to your collection. Here we can see the Bonneville style racing Oldsmobile with the chopped down windshield and the roll bar and the tonneau cover and the bulged up hood as well as the screen in the front for catching any bugs. We also have these really cool mag wheels and the side exhaust dumps. Also included are these deluxe decals. On the end of the box, we can see this really nice three quarters illustrated view of the stock Oldsmobile F85 Cutlass Convertible. Check out these action features, dual weaver carbs, dual blower drive unit, Judson supercharger, custom taillight assembly, disc brakes, custom aluminum wheels, custom grill, racing screen, racing windshield, tonneau cover, Elko shift, Janssen steering wheel, custom air cleaner, airflow roll bar, racing pipes, only from the cats at AMT. See the super racing version on the other side of box. Finish the exterior of this exciting car with candy gold and the interior with satin white. Paints available from your hobby dealer. Now let's take a look at the amazing instruction sheet so that you will know all the options and ways to put together your AMT 1964 Oldsmobile F85 Cutlass Convertible Model Kit. We start our build with the stock and custom engine assembly. So what we have here is our choice between the custom air cleaner or the stock factory air cleaner. We have the carburetor, intake manifold, valve covers, cylinder heads, right and left hand side engine block with the transmission molded in place. We have our oil filter. We also have the exhaust manifolds, right and left hand side, the oil pan, the front timing chain cover, the starter motor, the alternator, and we also have our belts and our pulleys and the fan. And if the stock version of the engine is not powerful enough for you, we have the competition version with the Weber carbs. We have the three-piece Judson superchargers here, a dual set, intake manifolds, valve covers, cylinder heads, a distributor, the right and left hand side engine block, the starter motor, the oil filter, the custom exhaust headers, the oil pan, the front timing chain cover, and our supercharger belt drive. The next step in our assembly is the wheels and chassis. So here we have the completed engine of your choice being dropped into the chassis, which is a one piece pan. We also have the metal axles. You have the option of adding on the disc brakes, which just slip onto those wheel backs. We have the tires, as well as your choice of the stock hubcap or the two-piece knockoff aluminum wheels. Step three shows our interior assembly. You get the choice of building this stock, custom, or racing. So what we have to start with is the interior tub with the center console and the rear seat molded in place, as well as the side panels. Then you can drop in your stock bucket seats or the racing seat with the three-point seat belts. You also have an option between the custom steering wheel or build it stock with the stock steering wheel. Here's the stock instrument panel with the rear view mirror being glued on place, as well as the option of using the racing panel, which you would glue right over top of the stock instrument panel. You also have an option of the stock T handle, which you glue onto that console or the custom gear shift lever, which would also glue onto the console and the addition of the fire extinguisher for the racing version. Step four shows the body assembly. And first off, we have our radiator being glued to the radiator wall. Then our battery gets glued to the radiator wall. Then we glue in our windshield to the windshield frame, cement in the completed interior. 
and you can add in these snap rings just to hold it all in place. Then the firewall into the location slots which are in here and then we get uh, the option of our stock hood or the racing hood. One thing you might notice here are these tabs that are sticking up one on the body as well as one on the stock or the racing hood. And back in the day, AMT used to have a metal clip loop that you would put the hood in here and then attach the clip hook onto both ends of these tabs that are sticking up. Unfortunately, round two has not included that with these kits, but they were prone to actually snapping off and flying away in the actual build of your model. Next, we get into our final assemblies and we're starting off with the stock Oldsmobile. So first off, you wanna install the front bumper as well as the rear bumper, which is highlighted down here in this rear illustration. Then you wanna attach the screws up through the holes and into the pegs on the body, front and back, with the four screws. Then you would cement in the rear chrome panel, add in your taillights, and then add in the convertible boot to the body. If you prefer to build this model as the custom, here's the instructions on how to do that. So first off, you're gonna add on your roll pans by gluing them to the body in the front, as well as up into the rear. Next up, you're gonna take the chassis and attach it to the body with the four mounting screws. Then you wanna add on your custom lenses to the custom grill and glue that up in the front. Next up is to add in the screen insert to the front of the car or your choice of the license plate instead. Then you're gonna take your custom taillights and glue it into the taillight housing and then glue the taillight housing up onto the body. Down here we have our backup light which glues into the backup light housing which will glue onto that rolled pan. Then next you want to add in your bumpers to the car. There are two in the back and two in the front. Then the outside exhaust will glue into place followed by the convertible boot to the body. If racing is your scene then here's how you want to build your model. Step number one is to trim off the windshield post flush with the surface of the body. Then assemble the windscreen and roll bar to the tonneau cover and cement to the body. Next up, you want to use the stock grill and install that to the body and the rear bumper, the stock rear bumper to the body as well. Then use the four fastening screws to screw the chassis to the bottom of the body. Next up, you want to add in your clear racing screen to the grill. Then turn the car around to the back Add your rear chrome trim panel onto the body and the stock tail lights gluing in there. Then cement the stock exhaust pipes to the chassis as well, connecting it at the engine by the exhausts. Step number nine is to add in the driving lights and the fog lights onto the front of the body. And the final step in this entire racing car is to add the racing mirrors onto the body. And that location is your choice. Now on to the plastic components. AMT has actually provided a piece of cardboard in here which helps protect that windshield frame from getting crushed. So I will remove it and we'll take a look at what the body actually looks like. Here we have the model kit with the protective cardboard removed and you can see the wonderful sun visors which are mounted on top of the windshield frame as well as the windshield wipers on the cowl. We have the mounting areas for those screws and if I just turn this this way, there's the wonderful cutlass emblem right here, the GM door handle, as well as all the molding details and the body sculpting as well. Looking at the back up close, you can see the panel nicely done. Again, nice body sculpting on here. The front has the radiator support wall right there as well as that little clip that I was talking about with the hinge. Up underneath you can see all the mounting points for screwing the car chassis onto the body, as well as for the interior with those retaining circles. A little bit of a uh, AMT mark right here. Overall though, not much on mold marks at all. This is pretty clean casting. Here are the, the location areas for that firewall to glue across. Overall, I would give this model an A+.
And just for a little size comparison, here we have the AMT 64 Oldsmobile kit and the AMT 1965 Pontiac GTO kit. You can see that they both share a similar size as well as a similar width. Next up we have our interior tub and it is quite nicely molded. You get the wonderful console down the center as well as the pedals for the automatic. You've got your automatic pedal there and your gas pedal. There is a texture for the carpet. There is mold marks in the four corners which can easily be removed with that number 16 hobby blade. We also have our side door panels which are a little bit soft but that's the nature of molding in a tub. We also have the wonderful upholstery pattern here and the rear package shelf. Here we have the mounting points for the interior and up underneath there are no mold marks. Oh, there are in the corners. There's a little bit of flash on here, but overall it's a really nice interior. Next we get the chassis pan, and here the mold marks are a little more prevalent. You can easily sand them off to remove them, or use that number 16 hobby blade again. Here we've got our cross member where the engine is going to mount in at the points right here. There are some pins in there just so that the mounting is precise front and back. Now turning this over you can see the nice detailing going on here. We have the holes for the mounting screws. We also have our fuel cell. Now on the real car there should be a brace across here just to complete that perimeter frame and one in the front actually right between where the screw holes go. Now there we've got the lower front A arms so you don't really have to mess with the suspension in this kit. We also have our exhaust pipes and the rear axle. There is quite a bit of flash right up in here, but you do get two mounting holes for your axle, which you can open up to have this at the stock ride height or lowered, which it doesn't really show in the instructions. You'll also need to take a drill and just drill out these exhaust tips right there and there to make them look more realistic and not just ended flat like they are. Overall though, the detail on this one piece pressing is quite nice and should make for a wonderful display model. Here we have a little bit of a mock-up dry run of the assembly of our models, just so you can see how nicely the interior fits into place, as well as the chassis up and underneath. Now just by carefully sliding this back and forward, you can align up those screw mounting holes right there and there and then add in your screws when you're ready to assemble this wonderful model kit. You can see a bit of a gap right here on the interior toward the back, but that would get covered up by the convertible boot. This parts tree consists of our hood, our wheel backs, as well as the interior retainer clips. And what we have here is the wonderful Oldsmobile lettering up on the front of the hood. Turning this over, we also have the fireproof matting material underneath. There is a little tab for those hinges. And here we have a bunch of little holes up underneath the hood, which is quite accurate to the real car, as well as our wheel backs and those retainer clips. There is a bit of flash on here, as well as mold marks in the four corners, but once again, easily removed with the proper tools. This parts tree includes our stock dashboard, our stock steering wheel, as well as the convertible down top. We have our front and rear roll pans in here, and our optional disc brakes, as well as the optional steering wheel, and this little tiny grill right here, which I do believe is an interior speaker or one of the exterior body components. Take a look at this wonderful dashboard, just like the real 1964 Oldsmobile. There's a little bit of yellow discoloration on the white plastic, which I do believe is part of the mold release agent. There we've got our stock steering wheel. The convertible boot looks really nice, as do the rolled pans, very simplified and very 1960s customizing era style. We also have these wonderful disc brakes with calipers included. Now what you're intended to do is glue these onto the chassis and then these wheel backs are supposed to fit in the hole and allow for easy rotation. So they're not spinning with the wheel back, thus uh, moving the calipers out of the way, you know, making them spin as it were. There's the stock steering wheel. This really reminds me of an AMC steering wheel from say the 1970 AMX, doesn't it? 
doesn't it? It does. Okay, now turning this over, there are some mold marks in here which you'll need to remove. There's that tiny little grill, or whatever it is, and again, it looks quite nice. You have to refresh your look at the instructions to figure out where that goes, but overall these simplistic parts are quite nice. Our next collection of parts trees includes our stock and racing seats, as well as our racing roll bar. So we just move the roll bar out of the way and take a look at these wonderful seats. They actually contain the correct upholstery pattern for the stock seats. And over here on the racing seats, we also have the holes in the back and the soft padding. Turning this over, there are some mold marks which you'll need to fill in and sand out using the cross sanding technique just to smooth it all up. And up underneath here, there are some mold marks. I'm not sure if that's really too important. The bucket seats for the stock version are molded as one solid piece. So again, watch your seam line, which should be running up along this way. Try to remove it as carefully as you can. The texture on the back here is quite nice, and overall, these are a wonderful pair of seats. Looking at the roll bar, it is quite nice in design. But up and underneath, we have some mold marks, which you'll need to address and a little bit of flash around the edges. Overall though, a really awesome little set of parts. On this parts tree, we have our racing instrument panels, our racing seat belts, the fire extinguisher, as well as our racing exhaust dumps, our universal firewall, as well as our license plates and the radiator. Now, bringing this up to the camera, we can see some flash on this parts tree, so there is a little bit that you will have to deal with. The firewall looks really great with the heater motor as well as our brake system. And it almost looks like the coil is up here. There's our license plates which have 1964 AMT molded into them. So you could always paint them up or flip them over and get rid of the mold marks and use this for your decals, license plate decals. The radiator does look a little bit tiny, but Oldsmobiles were kind of noted for smaller radiators just to make the cars a little lighter and a little faster. My 72 suffered from this. Doesn't do too good on a hot day. There's the instrument panel and again, the exhaust dumps. So look at the nice detail on the seat belts as well as the fire extinguisher. Another a really great attempt by AMT. Here we have two larger parts, which include our racing hood with the louvers and the bump on top as well as the four hood pins in each of the corners. And here we have the racing tonneau cover. This might actually also work on that 1965 Pontiac convertible or any of these other style GM cars. Bringing this up to the camera, we can focus in on the details. Again, the louvers look quite nice and you will see the little lockdown tab buttons for both the windshield and for the tonneau cover so that they could quickly uncouple this from the car if they had to. Not bad on mold marks up underneath, not that you're really going to see this underneath, but you will with the hood, and there are four in each of the corners, but they do have the fireproof matting molded up underneath the hood, as well as those little circles just like on the stock one. So again, a really awesome components. Here we have the parts tree for all our engine components, which includes our engine block and transmission. The transmission being an automatic. We also have the stock air cleaner, the belts and pulleys, the oil pan, the cylinder heads, the stock intake manifold, our racing Weber carbs, distributor, carburetor. There's our drive belt and pulley for the blower systems, as well as our battery, our racing exhaust headers, the intake manifolds for the racing version. There's our valve covers. Here's our oil filter and our starter motor, as well as our fan, our timing chain cover, and the stock exhaust manifolds. Now I gotta be careful because the oil pan's ready to fall off. There's a little bit of flash around that hole for the metal axle. But overall, I mean, this is a really cool, well-detailed motor. It is a smaller Oldsmobile motor. There are some mold marks on the bottom here, which need to be sanded off in order to get this engine to align perfectly. There are some alignment pins, but like my uncle used to always say, in order to get these engines actually to fit together properly, sand these things off and then use liquid glue and just slide that engine block back and forth until everything comes in perfect alignment both top and bottom and front to back. 
I think he was quite correct on that, actually. It saved me on a, quite a few model kits, which have been molded not too precisely over time, but hopefully this is not one of those. Next, we take a look at our chrome parts trees, and you do get two in this kit. The first one includes the stock grill, headlights, and bumper, as well as the rear bumper. And the second includes our racing front grill and our racing rear bumper, as well as the chrome insert for the back of the car. Here we have our stock hubcaps and wheels, as well as the racing wheels, the custom front grille, and our side pipes and all the engine and body components. So let's first start by bringing up the stock grille and bumper to our camera. Again, you can see just how nice this is. Just add a black wash in the back here, which you can check that out by looking at that link right there. There's our rear bumper as well. And we do have those loops to mount to the body. So remember to put these in the car before screwing it up into the chassis. Now moving that out of the way, let's take a look at our racing grill. Here we have this nice mesh in front, which is an air intake, I do believe, for when you're racing. The headlights have been blanked over or covered over. As you can see here, if you take a look at the stock version, you can actually see the headlights which are molded in place, but here they are blanked out. Take a look at the nice wheels on here. They have the T in the center, which you paint red, and you'd use a bit of a black wash in there. We also have the Oldsmobile molded into the back panel. There's the chrome bumper for the rear, which doesn't actually have those mounting loops. Neither does the racing front grille. So that's really interesting. There we have the blowers as well as our racing wheels. Take a look at that front grille with the rectangular headlights. Then we've got our Corvette style custom bumpers which wrap around the front of the car. Take a look at those nice exhausts there. We also have some of our racing lights and the knockoffs which glue in here. You could also use the knockoffs on the stock wheels if you want a little bit of an extra touch there. Then we also have the headlight bezels and the rear inserts and the inserts which grow up into the uh, front rolled pan. Then we've got our mirrors and our shift levers. Again, really awesome stuff. There's our alternator as well. Turning it over, there are mold marks in corners, but again, remove those with that number 16 hobby blade. So there's our chrome looking all nice and wonderful. Here we have our clear components for the model kit, which basically mostly consist of just custom clear components. But here we have our stock windshield and the racing windshield. We also have that front clear screen. Now this is textured, so I'm not sure if you could uh, very carefully paint the texture, the raised texture. I would suggest just not trying to do that. There we've got our clear components for the headlights, as well as for those fog and racing lights, and a little bit for that front custom grill. There's our stock taillights and the custom taillights. So these parts are pretty clear. They have been put in a nice plastic bag to prevent them from any scratches. The rear taillights are very thin, so be careful you don't lose any of these, but they're flat. So if you did, you could easily replace them with some red, evergreen styrene strip, just cut it to the right shape. And taking a look at these stock tail lights, there is a bit of a texture in there. Actually, they're pretty smooth too, but uh, they will plug into that shroud in the back. There's the texture on that grill. Again, you can see it's a nice waffle pattern. Very light. I, I don't think you could actually paint that, but you know, I could be wrong. I'll let you guys try that. There we also have our lights. Now this one does have the mesh in there. It's uh, smooth on the top, but then meshes down below. So make sure that mesh is running north and south. And then here we've got our headlights. They also have a little bit of texture in there, as well as that insert. That's a backup light panel. 
just had to remember what that was. So overall, again, the transparent parts are quite nice. Here we have our tires as well as the metal axles and the screws. Now AMT has put them in a bag and they've sealed it here and at this angle. So what I'll do is I will leave the screws and the axles in the bag just so I don't lose them. But I will open up these tires and we'll take a look at those now. These tires are quite wonderful. On one side you have these nice pad printed white walls and by turning them over you can also read Firestone Supreme in gold lettering and see the little Firestone emblem. AMT has done a really awesome job on pad printing these. As you can see the gold there and that wonderful white wall. The side tread pattern looks accurate to the old Firestone tires and the tread itself wraps around the wheel this way which is quite typical of the tire pattern designs back in the day. So again, really wonderful tires made by AMT and it's nice to see them updated. AMT has done it again by including this wonderful decal sheet so that you can use this on any number of AMT kits in your collection or Ravel Monogram or whoever else you want to use them on. There are some sponsors on here which I've never seen in an AMT kit before such as Shell and Pirelli and Airhead Heart as well as these DA ones. There is an American Grand Prix license plate as well as a Michigan FF 3424, AMT racing decals, as well as Auto World. Auto World, of course, is the website where you buy AMT model kits from if you don't want to shop at Monster Hobbies. We have the Auto Club decal, the crossed flags, racing number 280 in the circle, as well as 73. We also have Chuck Farley here, be racing or bracing for racing. We have these wonderful Hurst Shifter decals, as well as Krager Champion Spark plugs. I do believe this is NHRA for your Bonneville racer. We have the instrument panel and the red, white, and blue racing stripe. Again, Moon Eyes and STP, as well as Auto Light. Again, wonderful, wonderful decals. And A slash M, which is the racing class that this car would be in. So again, really great work from AMT. If we turn the decal sheet over, you also get a nice little illustration. It might be hard to see in this video, but you can see where all the decals are placed, such as the racing numbers on the doors and your choice of where you're going to put all your racing decals, the sponsors, I should say, and the Bonneville motors, which you glue onto the back rear quarter panel. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this unboxing video of the 1964 Oldsmobile Convertible Model Kit by AMT. And thank you once again for joining me as I presented it to you. And if you love great model kits, don't forget to check out what's available now at our hobby store, including this kit, while quantities last, at www.monster-hobbies.ca. And while you're there, sign up for our newsletter, because every week there is a new deal coming in your inbox if you do so. So until next time, everybody, we will see you at your Oldsmobile dealership, and happy model building. See you on the next video.